Justin Hansen, it's great to talk to you. Thanks for your time today. What are some of the challenges you see agencies deal with when they're adopting DevSecOps environments, and how have you seen them successfully deal with those to be able to move forward in that kind of an environment? Welcome, Justin. Yeah, thanks for having me. Federal agencies and other entities really aren't that much different than any other large organization. And I think one of the biggest challenges, um, you know, when we look at any large organization, you know, it, you know, federal agency or or anything else, is you know, when it comes to DevSecOps or or automation of any kind in general, it is really around how to best manage that organizational change management. Organizational change management is hard, and and I'm not talking about like just your change management practices, but people's mindset. Um, change management, though, I mean, it's it's a good example. You know, change management. I've been, you know, in, in the IT space since I was, you know, about 16 years old. And, you know, one of the things that I've noticed over time is, as humans, we we really respond. We have a we have a really significant pain response. You know, if we experience some kind of pain, we don't want to experience that again, and we'll put things into place to prevent that from happening in the future. Change change control is one of those organizational practices um, that kind of came about because of pain. Troubleshooting 101, when you learn how to troubleshoot a problem, the first question you're taught to ask is, well, what changed, right? So if things are breaking all over and you're constantly asking what's changed, it's the logical conclusion is, man, we've got to find a way to track these changes and make sure nobody makes any changes without any problems. So this tradition, like change management, there are others, right? Whether it's manual reviews, or I've got to make sure that the that the boss is aware that we're, you know, that we're that we just pushed that out, or that we're, or I've got to have a human actually log in and validate that everything's still good. Those kinds of traditions, though, they they kind of in a modern world, they they start to actually hold us back. And I've seen, when I talk about a challenge for organizations like achieving like the kind of automation that's needed for a successful Dev- DevSecOps program, right? Though traditions like change management or, or manual signatures on a piece of paper that, that kind of break that automation, that's really what holds people um, back from truly achieving that. So yeah, how do you overcome that, right? I, I, yeah, it's, it becomes a very tough question. Are the change management solutions in a public sector environment in the DevSecOps arena similar to what they are in a private sector type environment? I, I don't want to say everything's exactly the same. In fact, you know, change management practices and, and how closely we adhere to those, you know, vary even from, from organization to organization, from agency to agency, right? And it's a lot about what they prioritize, but largely, right across every organization I interact with, they they're they're, they're pretty much the same. There's usually a there's definitely a change management process that's in place, right? It's it's very important to the organization because we prioritize availability and reliability of these systems, and so it's incredibly important. And so it's one of those things that we hold really tightly to. Um, now I think that there's there's approach and like we shouldn't just throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, hey, we're automating everything now and we don't need those old things anymore. That's a that's also a mistake that can be made, right? But when we start thinking about automation and, you know, really DevSecOps is all about automation. I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. But when we start thinking about automation, how critical it is. But at the same time, we need rigor and practice around the things that we're doing in these systems. We've got to be able to track what's changed and all those things. The, the way to try to marry those up, and this is where the mindset change starts to come in, right? When I start talking about how do we truly change mindsets of people, it's it's really about thinking about how to accomplish the same things, but in a new and innovative way. A great example I've used many times with a, with a lot of a lot of different individuals at different levels is in early in my career I was on a server operations team and one of my early jobs was racking and stacking servers in a data center. It was an awesome job. I loved it because the air conditioner was running all the time. There's a cool in there, right? And I could put my headphones in, right, and, and you know listen to music and nobody bothered. You just just sit there. And run. The only thing that was bad about it was the cable management. 
I was never really good at that. But invariably, at the end of my product, Rack and Stack, and then I'd install you know, whatever server OS we were installing. And at one point in that process, I would need an IP address, right? You can't get an IP, you can't put anything on the net without an IP address. And the way that we did that is we had a clipboard hanging on the next to the door going out of the data center. And somebody put in Excel all the IP addresses and you would literally pull it off and there's a pen like strung to it and you write your server name next to the IP address and, and you'd find somebody where somebody scratched one out and maybe that one's available. But we had a manual process for doing it. It didn't work really well. Every once in a while, about once a quarter, we'd have to have a big meeting about, you know, everybody gets in a room. It's like, who's didn't they update the clipboard? We still have probably you can't have duplicate IPs on the network, right? You still can't stomp on other, you can't be stealing other people's IPs, but We've automated to that to the point where we don't think about that anymore, right? Things like DHCP and dynamic DNS and all of those things have got to the point where we don't even think about it. We've accepted automation and we've kind of allowed those other processes to go to the wayside. Same thing with, hey, you're deploying new code or you're updating a certificate on a web server. At some point, automation has to get to the point where it's so trusted, we can then think you know, well, what are we actually controlling against? We want to, the, the change control really then moves to, you're implementing a new process. The process is automation. So we're going to validate that process and say, okay, the new automation process is now going into place. And I want to, I, I need rigor and change control and validation around that. But once it's in place and it's validated and we have all of the things we need to, you know, to track when it fails, you should just let it run, let it do its thing. You don't open a change control when your computer needs to renew its DHCP lease. I mean this as a genuine question, not as a rhetorical question. Is it possible to measure mindset change? And if so, how does one go about doing that? Because it sounds like that's maybe the most <sighs> key important element of dealing with this change into a DevSecOps mentality. I think everything is measurable at some point. I mean, that's why that's why stati statisticians exist, right? I mean, you can find some way to measure something somehow, right? It is a difficult thing. I think for me, the, the way I measure it when I'm talking with executives or if I'm talking with down to the PKI admin, right? The way I measure it really is, is their attitude towards, and really that becomes the culture of the organization. What is your attitude towards innovation? What is your attitude towards pushing the envelope? It's really hard though. I don't know how you would ever get to a, a quantitative measurement where I could actually attach a number to it, but I'm sure that there's somebody out there that would be willing to take a swing at it and probably write a, a dissertation. Justin, it's great to talk to you. Thanks very much for your time today. No problem.